and we are recording now, apparently. Uh, welcome, boys and girls, cats and dogs. We are an inclusive channel around here. And look who I have with me. This is Stuart from The Wool Patch. And yeah. um, he is in the UK. He has a shop in Sussex? Uh, Suffolk. 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 Are you close. <laughs> I wish I knew the counties better, but you know, I'm I'm such an Anglophile, so I'm ashamed for even having uh, mistaken those two things. Suffolk. Anyway, he's uh, he's got great content, and he has actually been very nice to me in featuring some of my oh. works on his uh, um, channel. So anyway, tell us about yourself, Stuart. Oh, well, thank you for that nice introduction, David. That's very kind of you. Um, I've only just recently come across you uh, and your wonderful crochet, and that's because of the wonders of YouTube. Because um, I've only been doing this for, for two years. Um, I started my shop in 2016. So when's that? So, so that's YouTube since 2019. Um, and it's a whole wonderful community out here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so it's been nice getting to know you and starting to see your community too. But yes, I started in the, the yarn world and the fabric world in 2016 when I left teaching. <laughs> I was a teacher for, oh, what was that? 16 years, 2000, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of rolling my eyes because I graduated from college in 1984, so <laughs> or what you would call um, university. But yeah, I I I finished university in 1984, but still, um, that's that's rightly from our little chat. You're you were in the the art world as well, weren't you? you was it music? Music, yes, yes. I I went to school. I started school i wanted to be a uh a, a, a music teacher um and when i finished i wanted to be a performer i think it's good that i never was a music teacher largely because i was still a child even at 21 when i finished school uh, yeah. mentally i was a child so it it would not have ended well for anyone <laughs> um, and then I also, there were other reasons why I never became a performer. So, uh, but I you learned kind of in that... a lot. Anyway, go ahead. In that world. Well, I was in that world. Um, I wasn't, I didn't really ever want to be a performer, but I did want to be in the theater world, either as a, as a director or a, a set painter or a costume maker or a, or a or lighting design so i always knew i was in that sort of backstage role and um but i also knew i wanted to teach um so uh, i went yeah pretty much straight into teaching and then was head of soon made head of drama and i was in secondary so i'm teaching 12 year olds up to 18. And it was wonderful doing all things theatre, teaching theatre, but but um, also promoting the those roles that you never really hear much about. And without those roles, you wouldn't get theatre, TV, film or anything, would you really? You think about it. Um, and I remember always the kids saying, because um, when we would perform, I was... Uh, I I find that really hard, and, and I was like, "Oh no, no, I'm, I'm I'm not into acting." And they go, "Sir, but you're a head of drama." It's like, "Yeah, but drama is so much more, it's so rich, all these different roles." So I ended up pushing teaching uh, at my at school with 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 those sort of roles. So we would we would have mm -hmm. backstage lessons, we would have um, courses in theatre uh, design, set making, or lighting, and it was brilliant wonderfully rich and you were seeing the kids come through and learning uh, skills and using skills um, that they never really would get the chance and also making sure that they understood that drama was more than just acting and, and trying to become famous um, and it was wonderful seeing kids on the lighting board you look at the tech that you're using here with 
with all this live streaming and and titles and things well the kids would be doing that with a, a you know digital digital lighting board with moving lights you know where you can program the lights on the beat and it was great seeing some boys do that and then seeing some boys go into costume design and making we would do fun shows where where we would like do um like a, a musical uh, a, a, an evening of musicals so you might have like a um, or a film musical you had like the ghostbusters in i remember some of the kids loving that because they had to make the backpacks <laughs> for the ghostbusters so so you had that making them designing them painting them and i loved it absolutely loved it but you know what it's like with education you sometimes get politics involved and every here in the <laughs> i can see yeah here in the uk in 2016 we had a new government come in and and a new then uh education secretary and he basically decided that our gcse system 16 years um that the kids take wasn't rig so he made every subject have a written exam and not only did he want every subject to have a written exam he 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 thought some of the subjects were too in my words wishy-washy we had a lovely subject called expressive arts where kids could opt uh into drama or into creative writing or into dance or into art and he culled a lot of those subjects and to me that was really the last straw because i didn't really want to teach 16 year olds drama and theater stuck in a classroom reading books you know i i totally get you i totally get you yeah i mean it was only later that i learned that that i i probably should have spent my life. I think the stream my end is. Yeah, uh, go ahead. That's all right. My, uh, I didn't hear anything you said that the stream buffered. It, yeah, you were frozen for a second here too. Um, I don't know how it's going to look when we when I look at the the video at the end. Anyway, <clears throat> so um, yeah, it was only later that I learned that my role in life um would have been better fulfilled <coughs> had i been on the piano bench teaching and coaching singers because i mean there were people who told me that well for one thing they they told me i was good at it another thing they told me that i just let up when i did that you know it's it's like if you find something that makes you light up and and not everybody knows what that is mm. uh but i i think you do um um uh but then i i, I was never able to make that happen so i i had a corporate career and you know at one time i had a bmw so you know none of that matters now because i'm sort of semi-retired and i crochet well and do you that's too. pretty <laughs> that's that's what pretty much happened to me because I, at that point i thought i it, it, the, losing those subjects and and making drama uh, a, a written exam rather than a practical subject it, it just stripped all the creativity out of it and i didn't really want to sit in a classroom with with especially with a lot of low achieving boys who would be brilliantly in drama and who would opt for drama because it was a practical subject rather than another written academic subject and sitting with them having to analyze a play like they already do in english literature and I, I thought that that's just going to be really hard work. Mm -hmm. and, it, and if I don't enjoy that, then I'm certainly not going to be a good teacher. For, and I thought I can't, that's where I just thought my career has to change because uh, 
and, and there are some in, in all schools, you're going to get teachers where it's perhaps no longer a career for them, it's just a job. And, 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 and that type of teacher has a, can have an awful impact and maybe a negative impact on, on lessons and learning. And I thought, I can't do that. If my love for the subject is not there, I, I can't teach that. It just wouldn't be fair. So, yeah, 2016, uh, uh, yeah. January, I thought, that's it. I, I don't want to teach these subjects. Or oh, is that, I think my stream is playing around a bit. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I had uh, in January and I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just go and look for something, uh, something new. Uh, and I didn't know what that was or what that was going to be. <laughs> But I thought, well, the universe will do something. It's interesting. You you mentioned boys twice, um, and um, I I well, I've lost touch with this friend, but um, I knew someone who was an art therapist, and she taught crochet to these young kids who were what they on this side of the pond we would call at risk youth oh um, yeah yeah um and she said that some of those boys would be so proud of like the caps that they would crochet for themselves they would yeah. just show them off so that kind of thing a, a little skill a little achievement yeah. goes so far and skills yeah. can always be refined and oh, improved regardless absolutely. of what we're talking about yeah and and you think theater as well how many skills are there for some and and yes and and drama from our point of view we would do re very well with low achieving boys because it was practical so you just think with these wonderful subjects where you're in the theater you, you, you you need you need to rig the lights and we were lucky at my school to have a lovely theater we had a recent new build and a grant mm -hmm. so we had the lights that would come up and down on the rig and they would they would they would you know the whole proper mm -hmm. the locks and things and and tie them up and then push the buttons then go boys the love that program. kind of thing oh it's brilliant and but it's actually it was actually for so it wasn't um you know, I mean, that's a, a skill, but a vital skill. Because if you don't have that, then the actors can't have their show. Uh, the technical, the exactly. sound. So you're on these exactly. wonderful boards. And those skills... Oh, my gosh. The, those skills came about because of this subject. And this subject was called technical theatre skills. And it was wonderful, wonderful seeing them. The, and on how just these, you know, this, right, I'm in charge of the lights. How passionate they became because they knew for that show they'd see it all so it was it was a great shame to see some of those subjects go really it's such a shame um, and you, you, you so just add i, I just to, did as a see you just thought, add well, into what you what you're saying uh since since my background is opera you know uh, on top of the traditional theater you've got all of the musical thing there's the the orchestral stuff there's all of the timing there's um Many. everything and the lighting is so important and yeah. f, f, f all yeah. of the technical stuff yeah. that that goes into it and you get people involved with that even if they don't give a flying whatever for uh you know mozart or wagner oh, absolutely yes it doesn't yeah. matter yeah. because no. they're interested in what they're doing and what they're achieving and maybe in the end they're going oh that brunhilde was a little better than the one last night you know <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah um and that's the and that's the wonder of theater and all those unique skills that where you come to put on one little thing but you have to rely on so many um and um but i, I had 16 years of it and it, it was then it was then right to move on and i expect in another five years or or, or 10 years if if the, the our government changes and and something come educate well it will change you know what it's like with politics it changes every time you get a new government but Don't for me it was, started it, on politics. <laughs> for me it was it was the right time to leave um and so i 
I, I thought, and I had to hand my resignation in because I thought if I don't do that, you know what it's like, it will be another year gone by and then I'll turn into that grumpy teacher. I'll, I'll resign next year and then next year comes and I'm still there. So I did it. Um, uh, and I kind of think that in, that forced whatever happens next. And um, I thought, well, what could I do? I've been a teacher for 16 years. Uh, what skills do I have? And I thought, well, I'm not going to go into the drama world anymore. I didn't want to do that. Um, so I thought, well, perhaps it's my art background. So I I, I did teach art as well as a second subject. Um, and I did like art myself, drawing, painting, creating. And I thought I could, thought I'd have a little art shop. That's what I thought. <laughs> thought like a bit like um, we have a shop here in the UK called Paper Chase, which is full of stationery paper um, and I thought oh, I could have like pens brushes acrylics felt tip pens <laughs> we sharpies have like that Ooh. here too yeah yeah no. and I and I thought well do you know I'll have an art shop and I thought well I didn't have enough um, perhaps money to set up a shop from scratch that took an awful lot of upfront money mm -hmm. um, and my friend who I still am friends with who uh, who comes over to see me in my shop he, he was a colleague at my school that I've taught at he's head of business studies mm -hmm. he said well let's just let's google uh, craft shops for sale um, and the wonders of google and we did so we're talking I think February March time of 2016 and um, up came this lovely little shop in Long Melford, Suffolk. And it was delightful. It was really tiny, but it wasn't a craft shop. It was a, a wool and fabric shop. And oh, I thought, well, that looks really nice. Um, and it was in the same county where I lived anyway. So I thought, it's not far. So I think okay, it was the- so, uh, so it was nearby, but you didn't live there. Exactly. No, no, wow. no. Okay know it it was probably about um a 45 minute drive um and in in the country where i live 45 minutes is actually a quick drive um so <laughs> so i drove over i think it was the i think it was the easter holidays what was the school holidays um so I thought, oh, I'll go and have a look. So I went and I, I walked in and I fell in love with the place. And I didn't tell the lady who who was selling it, who who owned it, I was coming. I just went over and, and had a look around. And I just, oh, there was something about it. It was tiny. It really is tiny. It's like two rooms. That's all it is. And I, I came back and I just said, yeah, I love that. I, I want it. And, and um, I got in contact with her. and And then... It went from there and she was over the moon because she was she was a, a lovely lady, a retired lady who had only set the shop up two years previously. So it was a very, very young shop. Uh, and she had to sell it, sadly, to look after her poorly husband, which is why she was so. Um, so she couldn't believe that I came along. And also I was kind of real as well, because you know what some people are like when they investigate things and they could just be. You know, just people who mess around like when people buy houses sometimes they do that um but i was for real and and loved it and i said i want it and she was like oh my word and there we are that was that was easter and put the, the did all the jobs of, of of you know buying it all and lawyers and everything and then come summer holidays i left teaching and i had then six weeks to prepare for opening my shop so changing the branding changing uh, the name um and and it for being me um and taking on the new customer so september the first i had opened the wool patch and uh, which is wool because i was selling wool and patch for patchwork so it was the wool patch um and with then with my little logo barbara the sheep with her little patch on her bum and there we are so September the 1st, I was in a brand new career. <laughs> Not, and I've got to tell you this, I didn't know a thing about wool. Nothing. Mm. I, I knew I knew how to crochet a little because the colleague who I used to work with at school, um, she would do the the pan, uh, she would do the, the the costumes for all the shows. We would work together and she would make them. And, and, and she was very crafty. So we would uh, do craft things sometimes in the holidays. She taught me to crochet, taught me taught me how to do my first uh, treble, or what's that's, that's that's a double for you, isn't it? Is it a double? 
Yeah. I think what you call as a treble, what we call yeah. as a double, yeah. I, That's right. I've never understood why we have the different terminology about, you know, that's a separate no, discussion. I think I've worked out my own reasoning. I don't know whether this is right or not, but it works for me. Um, your single crochet, which we call a double, so you, you punch through and you pull mm -hmm. up a loop. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as you pull up a loop, you've got two on your hook, haven't you? So I think that's why we call it a double. Whereas I think you call it a single because uh, you are you're only pulling up a loop once. But you're the... yeah, and, and you you're you're doing the yarn over pull through both loops. So that's yeah. just one action there. Yeah. So Whereas, I think that's why you then call it single. What we would call a double, you yarn over, yeah. insert, pull through, then you yeah. have two actions. You yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the yeah. remaining two. That's two well, actions. That's probably why we I call think you're right. a double. Yes. Whereas, whereas for us, we would yarn over first, punch through, but when you pull up the loop, you've then got three loops, so that's why we call it a treble. Then you mm -hmm. go yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Um, so I, yeah, exactly. I th I think for most crocheters, the important thing is just knowing which terminology someone is using. Yeah, uh, because um, it's, it's not hard to differentiate, but because the stitches are the, are the same. So I I just knew to crochet. I didn't know anything about knitting. I had no idea what the wools were <laughs> four ply double knit aran or worsted all that i still don't understand all of the language that all of the other countries use i mean here we just used uh either numbers or uh, specific labels um uh, four ply we don't as far as i know we don't talk that much about plies we say like you know, a uh, 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 worsted or a DK That's or, right. or, or uh, a fingering or something else. Yeah. But, um, or a number that goes, that corresponds to it. For us, uh, our manufacturing goes back to when they did make yarn. The first time they made yarn, it was with four plies. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that was the only yarn that was available, uh, four ply. And then, when it started getting more popular um, and they wanted it to grow up quicker. So they then literally doubled the, the, the ply. So it was eight ply, but they didn't want to call it eight ply. So they just called it double knit because it's four double, double four to eight. Mm -hmm. So um, I had to learn all that. I had to learn all the, the different weights and the needles. And, and as you say, then learn, well, how does that correspond with America, with, their terminology and their we're in metric you're still in imperial um even though we like imperial here um yeah, it's the older generation that. still loves yeah. imperial yeah but i have met some perfectly lovely people on your side of the pond who work in 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 wool and yarn and dyeing and stuff and they try to educate me but i'm sort of stubborn i guess maybe or <laughs> ignorant or just <laughs> what they tried to educate maybe <laughs> but um yeah it's it's uh it's there it's the terminology in different countries is is just it's fast it's overwhelming but that's also i think the teacher in me finds that quite fascinating what americans call it what new zealand call it what australia calls it because of sport weight being different Actually, everywhere I, I i would agree with you there because there's a bit of a teacher in me my mother taught um taught school for about 400 years so and and i always and you know i when i started um um college university you you would call it um i wanted to be a music teacher so you know i have that educator in me so yeah i understand mm. um, that, it, so that it's that thirst for learning isn't it well and that's clearly in you as well because you're such, you're designing all the time you're making new things all the time and i think that's there is something quite exciting about that so i, I but i was also blessed with um social groups at my shop the the lady when i took over the lady had set up 
these social groups, um, knitter natters, where on a, a morning you have a set amount of ladies in. There's so there's a table out the back, five chairs, and there there are five spaces. So they would be there every Tuesday, and then you'd have a different set of ladies every Wednesday morning, and a different set of ladies every Thursday morning. So when I left, I actually wasn't leaving to just me and on my own and my shop, which I have to say was a godsend because in the pandemic, when it was just me on the shop, that for the first time, I, I, I realized how lonely it can be because I was teaching in a huge school. I had 2000 students. It was a massive school. And I was teaching classes where I'd have 30 kids and I'd be four, two or three classes a day. So it, you, you felt that hubbub, you had a huge team. I had a huge team working for me. I was a team of four. Um, so so to go from me on my own into a shop would have been de definitely lonely and and, 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 and and I would have struggled with that. But I was lucky because I didn't, because I had these ladies, different ladies every day, and they were wonderful because I had them in the morning. And I, I and, when I didn't know anything for those first two or three months, I had experts to hand. So when customers were coming in saying, can I have some four ply? And I'm like, oh, I haven't really learned yet where the four ply is because uh, uh, it was all dotted all over the place. Um, I was able to uh, ask some of the ladies out the back who would be there having a knit and natter. And, and and that just really strengthened the community between them and, and me. And I realized that how important they are to the shop um, because customers would come in and talk to them. Oh, what are you making? Or, oh, what's, what, can anyone help me with this? Um, I've dropped some stitches because I didn't know how to do that. So they would come out. So they, they were brilliant. So within within two months, I had... I had pretty much learned all the yarns and then I, as you do, you find things, you find your own working format. So I thought, well, hang on, all the yarns are all over the place. I can't do that. If someone wants to come in and want some four ply, I need to be able to say, here's the four ply column. So within, within a couple of weeks, I, I sorted it mm -hmm. into four ply and then double knits and then worsted then Aaron then chunky and super chunky and it was beautiful and I got it all organized and and you start making it your own and um uh, I think by Christmas I pretty much fallen in love with wool even though I had fabric there and I was and a, a bit of a sewer not much uh, uh um I had pretty much by then known that the, the love of the shop really is wool even mm -hmm. though I say do patchwork and I love patchwork, but I think my heart just just took me hook, line and sinker. There's something about it. The idea of this wonderful material of wool, what you can do with it. So many things you can do. With oh, it. you're giving me dreaming now because I mean, oh, having uh, one of these local yarn shops, these boutique yarn shops, you know, not like Michael's or, yeah. you don't have those here, there. But uh, we have some of our own equipment. Or, um, you know, the, the huge ones with all of these, um, what I call utility yarns. Um, but, you know, at, at a certain level, you're done with utility yarns. You want to work with nice stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so, and I know of one, I know of a, a yarn shop in my state, in a region of my state where I'd love to live that went on the market. And don't, don't make me start dreaming like that. Oh God. You could do. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a businessman though. I'm really bad at that sort of thing get off no you can't I, i'm not a businessman i'm it's all learned on the job it's all learned why not go for oh, it oh, and, I, and 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 i i also don't have the financing for it but that's no. an that's a uh, i'm i might could find the fi financing that uh but still anyway that that uh, that story is is just fascinating you find those communities of the people who come to the local yarn shop just to to just sit around and do their yeah. craft, 
Yeah. Whether it's like an organized thing, you know, Wednesday ladies, Tuesday ladies, or whether it's just whoever comes in today, mm -hmm. there's a table and chairs. Yeah. Um, I think that's lovely. I think that's oh, the well, I, best I love it. And as I say, it. during that pandemic, oh, that was the. I, I, some of these days, right, go back to 2016. I've been seeing the Tuesday ladies probably more times, a, well, once a week for 2016, 17, mm -hmm. 18, 19, 20, four years every Tuesday. Some of those ladies I'd seen more than my own family. So some of them are like, they're like my mum. They're like my mum's to me. Um, and and I would see them. And so, and we've lost some along the journey. And that that was, that was hard when I first lost my first knit and natter. Um, after, you know, when, especially when you've been seeing them every day. Um, and you know what it's like when you build up a community. They are, you are all family in a, in a way. Exactly. But, but the shop only works because of them. Some of the skills that these ladies and gents have are phenomenal. Uh, and I, and the shop survives because of that. So I have, a, a, well, I have quite, quite a few ladies who, who will knit for me because they love knitting. Um, so I've got Mandy and Irene, too, in particular. Um, uh, Mandy's an old colleague, wonderful old colleague, and Irene lives in the village and comes to Friday Knit and Natter. Uh, she, uh, Irene in particular, well, and Mandy, uh, they're of that generation or of that mindset where the hands have to be doing something when they're watching telly. Um, something I still, I, something I still can't understand because I'm still a, a watch of it, watching a TV person, and I try and knit when I watch TV, but I can't do two things at once. It depends upon what I'm watching. Some right. some okay. things I have to focus on, and some things. I mean, I will confess, I will watch. Um, most people who know me know that I have watched the 1995 BBC miniseries of uh, Pride and Prejudice about 111 <laughs> times and will watch it again and again and again. Um, and I don't have to be looking at the screen because I have, a, if I have a project in my hand and I hear what's going on, I yeah. know what i what yeah, i yeah. would see and, and same thing with like um uh, are you being served to oh. that lady is <laughs> classic you know, yes yeah a, a, exactly I, I, I well i told you i am an anglophile but um oh well welcome <laughs> uh -huh. um, oh, oh how, yeah so i how i wish i lived just then crochet and, and watch and some of these ladies do that and mm -hmm. and irene is wonderful because and you know what yarn is like some yarn is expensive um and and everyone has their own price point so some of these ladies can't knit all the time they can't keep spending money so irene loves it because i'll literally go to her i oh i, I, I want this cardigan knitted up or i want, want this jumper and i'll just give irene the wool she gets to knit every evening and not spend any money <laughs> oh that's perfectly or, lovely absolutely and 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 as I say, if if I don't give her anything, then she's got to spend some money and buy some some wool or or, mm -hmm. or whatever, or not knit, and then and then she's sort of you know. Oh. So we've gone through so many projects, uh, or or she'll knit for for private customers, um, and 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 private customers will pay her to knit things, mm -hmm. and it's a very reasonable price. Obviously, it's not you know like Dolce Gabbana prices, but. Irene just wants to knit. She would be knitting anyway. So it's like pocket money for her as well. And the skills that they have are phenomenal. And the stuff they've knitted for the shop, which in turn has helped sell yarn or help teach me new skills. Exactly. Absolutely and, phenomenal. And, 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 you know, I've, I've mentioned before, I, uh, I've been to a couple of these men's yarn retreats um, uh, this year where I would meet these, well, all different kinds of guys, but sometimes big, burly men with huge hands, you know, twice the size of mine. Yeah. They'd be Doing working beautiful, with these tiny yeah. needles <laughs> and these, the, this very lightweight thread, yeah. uh, uh, yarn. 
and the most exquisite work. I, I, I just can't imagine doing that kind of work. And there was one guy who said, well, how long is it going to take you to do that? And, I, and he said, eight months. And I'm going, eight months? I lose patience after one week. Yeah, I'd have to be switching between projects for sure. Yeah. But, but some of these ladies, because they they are so skilled, they they can watch telly, you know, and if you, in the evening or even on, in the winter when it's dark at five o'clock, there is nothing mm -hmm. else to do other than either sit and read a book, sit and listen to the radio or a podcast or sit and watch TV. And that's when they get frustrated because they feel it's a big waste of time. And I can understand that. Uh, you know, pr time is precious. The older you get, the more you realize, you know, where you're heading to. So they want to be doing stuff. So there's four or five hours there a day. So Irene can have a jumper knitted up within a week. And for a customer, that is actually very, very, that's, a, that's, a, that's amazing to have a handmade object within a week. And that's because she just does it every night. So um it's it's just phenomenal and so those skills that have, then pass on to me irene's taught me so much and and some of these skills are skills that aren't written in books they're passed down because irene's mum taught her to slip the first stitch all the time and pearl the last stitch because it it makes for seeming easier all those little things you know that, that where you don't find that in a pattern or in a book that's that's just amazing and there's so much wisdom and not only that um i have found the yarn community to be so warm and so welcoming yes. and yes. so accepting ah um well, of, yeah and, and um well just think about for me just think of there's there's now um a shop in in Suffolk, in rural Suffolk, um, with with well, yes, retired, full of retired people coming to knit and natter every day, uh, uh, and you're talking probably mostly sixty and above, to suddenly have a a young male come over to take the shop and a gay male at that, it it it, it, it never once was there ever an issue, fully accepted right from the beginning um and they have been just phenomenal as have the whole community it's never it's never it's never had an issue maybe the odd customer i have had and it does tend to be perhaps of a, a more senior age where they would um they would come into the shop uh and they would say oh is there anyone around who could help me with some wool and because they've made that judgment uh and that doesn't bother me in the slightest because i can understand why they will have made that judgment and mm -hmm. i go oh yeah i can and, and they, they're a little bit oh okay and then and they would then say right and then we'll just go into it uh, i did have one who said oh is, is, is your wife around to help <laughs> and i'm like oh, i didn't have the heart to say anything at all i said i said no i'm afraid not but i can i can help yeah I can, I can perhaps help if not i've got some ladies out the back because do you know i've got no issue of saying i don't know I don't, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm new to this, got no problems with that. And I think that's probably yeah. the teacher in me. But I do know four ladies at the back here who, who, who are the knit and natter who can help. Um, yeah. And so I've got around it that way as well. But other than that, I've had, I've had no issues with not being accepted. Um, and, so, and that I think is phenomenal. Have you seen a difference in say the past 10 or 20 years in terms of attitudes toward men doing yarn crafts, um, um, I don't really know because I've I've only got f five years. So, so 2016, I've come into it. Um, uh, so I don't, I don't know anything previous to that. Um, I would certainly say in the last two years, it is becoming more prevalent, and that's due to. Uh, I suppose shifting in age ranges because I'm seeing more younger people getting into it, or or because of YouTube, you're seeing more younger people 
doing it. I think mm-hmm. they were always mm-hmm. doing it, but we just didn't see them and we just yeah. presumed yeah. it was older people. Um, so YouTube is, is, has been a wonder and I've loved like finding you, finding all sorts of people podcasting. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. It, it, YouTube has done wonders for the craft world. And then obviously the pandemic has had a huge impact because uh, youngsters were, were very concerned about their well-being and, and wellness and mindfulness. So the crafting world and, and, and coronavirus just melded together. Uh, uh, and, yeah, exactly. I'd agree the crafting world exploded. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I can remember it, it might have been 10 years ago, maybe longer, um, my ex and I... Uh, we were still living in New York. We were, we had come here to North Carolina to visit my family. We went to a local yarn shop. There were uh, at that time he was already knitting. I had not yet started crocheting again. Um, so we went to a local yarn shop to see what was there. There were women coming out um, who were, you know, just leaving as we were arriving. They were amazed. They had never seen a man walking into a yarn shop before. Oh my God. I mean, we're talking North Carolina here, so. Um, uh, But at the same time, nowadays, uh, it's not that we were not welcomed, it's just that they were surprised. And uh, also at the same time, many times I've had people say to me that, I've never seen a man knitting before, and I'd give them one of these looks. <laughs> and I would say, I, you still haven't, this is crochet. Oh, <laughs> well, it, it still happens here. But uh, um, it, it's, it, it's, it's like a wow. Oh. And, and they kind of want to ask more, and they're like, oh, how did you get into it? Um, and, and that's great, because it then promotes a conversation. But what it then does is it, it, it then makes them self-question and realise what a silly thing to say, because, oh, you don't see many men knit. And, and, and then they're thinking, after, once we have a conversation, because they then start saying, my father knitted. And all mm-hmm. of them almost say that they can remember. So we're talking about... Um, uh, you know, a 50, 60 year old, then always saying, oh, my dad taught me to knit. So th- they they all know their father's knitted, but yet for that generation below them, they just don't, os- don't associate men knitting. Yeah, Weird, I, isn't I, it? I, how I, that, I, I, how in those funny. years, we're talking exactly. since 1912, probably 13 onwards, that for, there's a gap of men not knitting after the Second World War as well. And then suddenly seeing us knitting it's like oh don't often see men knit oh yeah but my father knitted and and it's interesting i've read um i've read books about other social topics that suggested that as as more and more men started doing more and more i don't know office type of jobs less yeah yeah physical less butch yeah jobs yeah this the these boundaries between what a man is does and what a woman does yeah. uh, became stronger in their minds because they were doing more of the i don't know if you want to call it passive work or the yeah non, all those non all those roles came work. About. yeah so um 40s 50s and 60s it's, it's it's really, that. It, it's interesting, and just now it occurred to me I could do a poll um, of how many people learned their yarn craft at their grandmother's elbow. Mm. I know I did. I, that's yeah. that's where yeah, I first learned crochet. Yeah. I learned yeah. cooking at my mother's elbow. She yeah. she taught yeah. school for four hundred yeah. years and would still come home and cook a meal every day. Yeah, and so I I love to cook. So I I mean that's that's the sort and I and well you can see it in my family we all love to show love with food, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's a thing in America, you know. But um, um, 
that it's 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 these things that that are mm. that, that get passed down too. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with with the crafting world with regard to that because there is a, a there, you know that generation at the moment of 60 plus that have got those skills you know like i read who i'm seeing knitting every day is that going to happen more in this generation now with a, a, us 40 50 year, or 30 40 year olds getting up are we going to be as knitting on crocheting like that and are we going to be passing down those skills? I'm worried that we might start to lose some phenomenal skills soon if we're not careful. Well, I just turned 59, and I can't imagine a better retirement than to either be sitting with a bunch of old ladies in a yarn shop and, and doing yarn or sitting on a balcony overlooking the beach or something and crocheting what I'm doing, oh, you know, going back and forth between the two. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's from that point of view, though, it's, it's quite phenomenal when I think about it. So those, those ladies that are in every day that, that are sharing their skills and we, I get to see their skills every day. Um, and, and as I say, let's not forget the fabric that I've got in my shop, the patchwork and the, and the sewing. I'm learning dressmaking myself now mm -hmm. and, and YouTube is helping with that. Um, and I'm learning. Uh, I'm You've shown more... some of your sewing accomplishments on your channel too, haven't you? Yeah, 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 I do. I try to do that because, because it is wool and it's, it's, it's patchwork fabric, mm -hmm. which I know is huge in America. Patchwork is... Is it, it's one of your, I, I get the impression, is one of your main heritage. A patchwork quilts are very yeah. popular. It's, a, it's yeah. a very, what we call a folk item. Yeah. Uh, and uh, specifically in certain parts uh, where it is like a part of the heritage. Yeah. And, you know, you, you can't like lump all of the U.S. Just like you can't lump all of the U.K., yeah. Uh, although people try to do both. Yeah. Um, so in specific regions of the U.S., it is a very big part of the heritage where these um, patchwork quilts or whatever you want to make out of them would be passed down from generation yeah. to generation. Yeah. And and we have that here, but it's 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 a, it's a bit of a niche hobby. So a very expensive hobby and and they it, all it, are, it, aren't they <laughs> because you need so much and and it's also you need a big setup if you're going to do it if you're going to do it and get a lot of enjoyment out of it you really need it set up your sewing machine and your cutting table set up in a study somewhere because otherwise if it's on the kitchen table you've got to remove it if you're going to eat dinner on there later and it becomes a faff so then you don't you can't be bothered to set up the sewing machine. Mm -hmm. and, and that's another reason why I've fallen in love with knitting and crochet, because it's so portable. You mm -hmm. can have it in the car or going on holiday or a long trip. You can have it in front of the telly. You can take it to work with you on the train as you commute. There are so many things that make me then do more knitting and crochet. But as I say, I still, I still do it, and I am learning myself. And the wonders of YouTube. I'm teaching myself too. So it's it, those, both uh, exactly. those yeah. I've learned so much from YouTube. Now, regarding quilting, though, um, long before I started my own channel, I, I heard the story of a lady, and I can't remember her, the name, the name of the channel or anything, but she started, she, uh, it was her passion, just, just the quilting. And she had her own little small town community. Mm, I think I know so, who you're talking about. I, I, I don't know who it is. I, yeah. But she uh, then, with the encouragement of, I suppose, one of her kids, she started doing YouTube videos. Yes, and then definitely. They, yeah. So that's Jenny they, Doan of Missouri Quilt Company. I That might be it. Yeah. And then uh, it, like, exploded, and suddenly yeah. her town is a destination. Yeah. She has got the whole street. She must have something silly like 15, 20 shops. Well, I don't know about that, but I mean, that sort of thing is amazing to me. I would be happy to have the kind of shop that you have. 
yes. as, <laughs> as long as I can make a living. Yeah. I, you know, I I'd sleep in the back room uh, if I could make a, uh, make a living uh, doing uh, doing yarn. Yeah, I think she was. It was one of those stories where the right time at the right point from mm. a digital point of view. Exactly. Uh, it's it's a bit like the um, I go to the gym and it's a bit like the gym shark boy here in the UK who was again at the right. Hey? I, I, I might have heard of him. Well, you've probably if you're on Instagram, you've probably seen the gym shark logo everywhere. It's like a, a Jaws, you know, mouth. Well, he was 19 and he realized he wanted some decent gym clothes to go to the gym in other than Adidas and Reebok or Nike, which was kind of general athletic. Um, so he made a couple of tops out of uh, out of Jersey. He wasn't a sewer at all. And and his mates all bought them. And then within like months, he had upscaled it and he'd got, he was manufacturing them himself on his sewing machine and he realized this is too big. And he's now one of the biggest what is he? Must be twenty four, twenty five now. One of the biggest people, all because at the time he made these tops. Instagram mm-hmm. was then starting up. You would then post a picture of you in the top, and he was like the first influencer. And people saw the pictures of of, of him at the gym in his gym shark t shirt and. And people wanted the, wanted that because you couldn't buy that from Nike or Adidas. Mm-hmm. So he was at the first. And it's a bit like Jenny Doan from Missouri Quilt when her son said, well, let's make a tutorial and, and put it on YouTube so people can follow. And of course, you didn't have that on YouTube. YouTube was probably still, it's, still in its infancy. And of course, then subscriber after subscriber and got, yeah, thousands and, and, and now leads the way in, in quilts and and how many youtube people are there like her doing exactly tutorials you know even in i would say it's a year and a half that i've been on youtube uh my very first youtube video um was i've since taken it down oh but uh i i was going does the world need another crochet channel and i concluded let's just find out and apparently it did uh, well, but yes, I have I, I have also seen I've seen a lot of channels grow tremendously in that time. Oh yeah, it's just so amazing, yeah. and and I wish I had that kind of growth actually. But yeah. um, I've I'm very happy with the growth I've seen, and I've, I've I've I know that you've grown a lot too, and you're probably happy with the growth you've seen as well. Abs- absolutely, because I I I went into YouTube um, for the idea to make, and it was well, it was two things: to grow the community, to share the community. But the second was, and I've been upfront about this all the time, was for it to make money to pay for the shop because the shop doesn't really make much money. You, you don't go into a yarn shop to make your millions. <laughs> um, so That's why I, thought, I say well, I would sleep in the back room if I could have a yarn shop like that. So, so I thought, well, if, if I can just get some ad money, like a hundred pound a month or something that could pay for the, the wireless, and, and the, the broadband or pay for the heating, then then that's brilliant. Obviously, you do have ideas. Well, if it grows and grows and grows, it could pay an awful lot. It could pay a wage or it could pay for my diesel uh, driving to the shop every day because I, I, I'm not one of these old school sort of shops where you live above it. Um, uh, and I thought, well, that, that's, that was my second reason. And I said that right from the beginning for my community, that if you subscribe and if you, if you, if you watch the ads, or if you, especially if I put in one or two special ads, if you just watch those, it, that money eventually comes to the shop and, and, and can pay a bill. And I think people have understood that and have appreciated that. And I'm slowly building a, a community. And, and, and I, wasn't, I wasn't fussed about how quick 
um, and ha- I just knew it. You, you know that when you get into YouTube, it's a, it's a, well, it's an ongoing thing. It's a long, a long haul. It's not something that it is. It, it's not a quick fix. And no, YouTube no, no. itself should never be considered a single source. You have to, um, you have to diversify. Yeah, you have to and, have multiple sources. Um, yes, I mean, I'm, you. Well, you've got the the shop itself. Yeah. Uh, plus YouTube, plus other sources, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've got YouTube. I've got uh, patterns on Ravelry. I've got merch on. Yeah. And you know that sort of thing. And disability. And, um, and I I then thought well, and also I wanted to do YouTube because it was the, I think the 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 artistic thing that I missed from teaching as a mm-hmm. as a as a as a head of drama. I would get to put on school shows and shows with kids. And that was my creative kick, you know, right, come on, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do this, this musical, we're gonna do this play. Uh, and we might do a big school show with everyone, like a classic um, British pantomime at Christmas time, uh, a bit of fun. Oh, let's get a group of small kids and let's just do a little one act play with with five kids. And and that would be done after school. When school finishes, you get that those extracurricular groups where you 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 get to know the kids in a completely different way. But you would then meet up on a weekend and you paint the set with the kids and 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 they'd see you out of your school uniform in in your your jeans and your t-shirt and those days were often the best days or and i would say you know we, we, oh, should we have fish and chips for lunch kids and and you'd sit there eating fish and chips uh, and and that was what was great about education that 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 creativeness and i think i missed that so i thought youtube might be that artistic thing that i can mm-hmm. make my videos and and, exactly. I can, uh, and, and that, so that's my creative outlet um as well as perhaps sitting by the, the fire knitting but um well, it's that that so I, i've enjoyed doing that as well now that you've been online for a while do you find that people um travel to visit you or if they are visiting suffolk anyway um want to see you particularly starting to starting to yes um i i i'm getting more uh, a few more online orders from from you wonderful people in america um who are uh, who are really hugely supportive i i think this might be a huge generalization and you might tell me off of this but i get the feeling that the the youtube community in knitting and crochet is far more advanced on youtube in america than it is here that's how it seems to me you 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 lot seem to be miles in a you, very current very on trend um and and with with and, and sort of updating knitting and crochet with with youtube and, and your podcasts uh whereas here in the uk i don't there aren't there isn't that many of, of people doing podcast talking or shows so so i've got i'm I'm, I'm growing a a more of an audience from americans watching me than perhaps brits watching me i'm not sure exactly what you mean by more advanced do you just mean that there's more of us there are more of us or Um, that you know embracing um, technology and and doing youtube okay technique technique technical wise but I, there are some wonderful people on your side of the pond that I love to follow. Oh, um, I might not even know them then. That's interesting, isn't it? Well, we'll have to talk then. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's one. Um, <laughs> oh, you're going to mock me for this. I love the way that she can do a Hilda Ogden uh, accent so perfectly. Oh, I missed it. You you broke up. Who did you say? Who did you say? Hilda Ogden from Coronation Street. Broke up again. I see. Oh, any anyway. So so she's from the north. She knows the northern accent, and you know a lot of Americans don't really distinguish between regional accents on your side of the pond. But uh, this one particular person, um, she's okay. Um, 
she she can do Hilda Ogden from Coronation Street to a T. <laughs> I'm brilliant. And uh, I love that early, early Coronation Street, like the first 10 years with yeah. Annie Walker and Hilda Ogden. Oh, and, oh my God. I mean, because I think Coronation Street and I were like born in the same week. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like brilliant. December of 1962. Yeah. So... Uh, it was something like that. I'm, I, I'm, 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 I might be off there, but um, you know. Oh gosh, now I've got the tune in my head. Da, <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I think um, I'll have to, I'll have to get to get a look. But certainly, from my point of view, I, I, I've got a, a big following from many people. Uh, from Seattle, from New York, from uh, down uh, uh, down in, into Florida as well. So, um, and 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 I'm slowly seeing that building. Uh, but a lot of my ladies, so I, it's been fascinating developing their tech skills because some of them in their 70s and 80s don't really know much about YouTube. And when I then show them YouTube and I get the laptop in at, at the back when we're having this and that, uh, it's, it's brilliant. So some of them are all going, oh, I, I watch you, Stuart, now on television because they they can, you know, what some of these smart TVs are like. You can get YouTube mm -hmm. and you're just on Sky or whatever. And there it is on, on your 50-inch TV screen. So that's wonderful being showing them the tech technology and, and and bringing it into their generation as as well as well as seeing you know uh, these young 20 year olds doing these podcasts um which i see a lot of from america that's how it comes across to me lots lots of americans doing uh, knitting and crochet podcasts uh so i've learned an awful lot from that um, but what i have found is is what type of show to do um and I, I, I did hum and ha as I started on, on am I going to be a, a straight person and talk for an hour, uh, or am I going to be more of a, uh, a, a production? And I think again, that's the the director in me, and the, and the, 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 let's put on a show. So if you see my shows, it is a this is a half hour show, and it it, it is it is it's filmed and recorded and edited and. And it's 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 like a magazine show or a I or a, or a, a morning TV show where you you have three minute sections sort of thing, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of made me slightly different from other knitting, crochet, or fabric podcasts. Uh, so I think I found my what what is me, what is the wool patch, uh, but I understand that's not everyone's cup of tea. But as you were saying. You, YouTube, when you said, "Oh, I didn't know whether anyone will want my channel," yeah, there is a, there there is a, there is someone out there for who has a preference for a certain mm -hmm. style show, and 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 people come and watch it and go, "Oh no, that's not for me. I prefer sitting watching someone talk." Or someone will go, "Oh, actually, I prefer a half hour show because I've only got a short amount of time and I actually quite listening." So you do find your audience, don't you, and what what they like. Yes, you find your audience and you find your niche. You find what works best for you. I mean, personally, I love these conversations. I love doing these these videos the very best. Yeah. But at the same time, they take the most work. Oh, yeah. um, most of my other um, YouTube streams are, are, are going to be live streams. Um, yes, you're brave. I've not gone down that route yet. I'm not brave enough. <laughs> come on to one of my live streams one time. Come on to the panel. I mean, that's how I got I, I got started doing it is is just going on on to other people's live streams as a participant. Um, Ooh, and so, um, uh, and it, it does help you build your confidence. But yeah, it's it's. I mean, social media, no matter what you're doing, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or 
I don't even know what the newer newest things are now, and I probably don't need to know. But it's all about finding your niche, finding what works for you, and finding what people respond to. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, as I say, I I love doing this because I meet the most wonderful people including you and i um i hope that i gain long-term friendships from all of these guys and yeah. i um i get good response from people and um oh, absolutely because you're 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 sharing people aren't you you're you're because the time you've taken to get in contact with me and to get me mm -hmm. on to give up time now, um, you're you're sharing that. So not only uh, uh, hopefully am I going to get something out of it, but your audience are getting something out of it from the time because you're you're widening knowledge, introducing people, and then that introduces someone else, and and then it's wonderful, isn't it? Well, exactly. At the most cynical level, you know, any of my followers who don't know you will visit you any of your followers who don't know me yeah yeah will visit me yeah so we might gain followers that way at the same time we uh as people are becoming better acquainted and people see that that's Absolutely. growing they see that yeah. that you know even if even if we were sitting side by side it seems like we would get along famously as friends and they love that too and people tease me about this i told you this i think people tease me about getting handsome men on here and flirting with them. <laughs> um well you've you've you, well it stopped there <laughs> No, uh, I I think you're quite flirtable. So, <laughs> uh, so oh, well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I've I've I've, <laughs> I've tried to behave while we've been talking here, <laughs> but you know, uh, well, it, I, it, when I stop recording and we keep talking privately, you can count on more flirting. <laughs> <laughs> But it's yes. So when you, it's almost then full circle. So that's where I am now with with YouTube, and it's and I'm now, and, and I, don't, I don't worry about the numbers. I, I I'm not. I, as I say, I'm not. I have seen people who have started a channel like months, two months ago, and I've been I'm doing it three years, and they've suddenly got to twenty thousand subscribers, and you think, wow, uh, that's phenomenal. And I think oh, I've God, seen damn. that too. But but I. It's it, it's difficult, isn't it? Because you think, well, okay, but for them, that's a that's a hobby, um, and so there's there's perhaps no pressure on where that goes. They 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 might not carry on doing videos. Whereas for me, this is this is part of the job, and and this carries on where the shop carries on. So if if it's, it doesn't matter about the numbers because it's exactly. it's it's all joined together. Uh, exactly, and it's not a job. I, 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 I had to learn to not call it a job uh, because um, I crochet, I design patterns, yeah. I do YouTube, um, and for the most part, otherwise I'm, I'm retired. But um, if I started calling it, or when, I was like mirroring other people who call it a job. I found that my outlook changed. I think that uh, the perception of viewers changed. And, and it just, and my motivation was, yeah, yeah, was decreased. So um, I have a really great oh, friend who is a very, I've lost you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're back again. It, okay, I just got yeah. a bit of lag. It's got a bit of lag. That's right, you're back. Yeah, sometimes I get that the uh, where you're... Um, 
your image is frozen, but your voice is still there. But I, I, I don't know whether that's all, normal. It might be. It'll all come out in the wash. Was my stream it might be my. Yeah. Um, and, and, but, and anyway, uh, yeah. so yeah, yeah I, it's, I, yes. I can't call it a job anymore uh, because all of my jobs in life, I can't say I've hated them all, but I, I always had this very mercenary, cynical view of them, and I can't do that anymore. Mm. Um, and I have a very good friend who is very much... Um, a counselor for me and she uh talks to me about finding my voice and you know what what do i want to say through my crochet through my channel through what i do you know what what is it that i want to share with the world with mm. the talents that i still have at my age um so I, I think that's, for me at least, that's the mm. best way to look at it. And uh, I, I don't say that works for everyone. It probably doesn't, but it works for me. So, um, yeah, I, I, it seems like we have sort of similar viewpoints there in different language. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. And it's because you can see how much time it takes up with YouTube, but it's it, it, there are so many, there are way more positives for, for that. Um, and I, I'm kind of a, a techie anyway, so I, I actually quite like, so I even know my, and I can understand why people record the, you know, the hour chats because it's their time just to sit and chat. Um, uh, and there's no there's no editing there because it is perhaps more of a, a hobby. But actually for me, actually the hobby is the tech side and final cut and editing. So that's why my shows are like what they are because I actually like of an evening, perhaps not watching telly, but actually sat here mm. in my study, uh, well, not with, uh, with mannequin over me, but here in my study in Final Cut, editing my little show together. So that's my sort of hobby from that. So that work, that's why it works well to do YouTube. Uh, and I'm rubbish at Instagram. And I don't, I don't do any of the other social medias. I don't do Twitter because I find that's all about words and it's quite a negative space. Excuse oh, me. Uh, I, and, I, I find myself think, uh, thinking, do people oh, hello. Still do Twitter? Uh, Twitter, but yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So for me, it's it's mostly YouTube and and cool. Instagram. But I have to ask you, does your mannequin behind you have a name? <laughs> yes. It's um. Come on, it's, my cat's come up. Hello. Come on, you. She got. <laughs> Sorry. She guts gets a bit moany. Uh, yes, this is Mr. Hunk. <laughs> oh, there you go. Mine is on the other side of the room. Can't you see her? She's right over there. Um, uh, she's Lady Jane Grey. Oh, well. Because she has no head. Um, <laughs> and she's uh, finished in this sort of brocade pattern. Oh, beautiful. But, um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. E exactly. As far as editing goes, I'm, I feel like I'm learning, but I'm also choosing things more and more where I don't have to do so much editing. Oh, and I can understand that because it takes an inordinate amount of time up. When I think about and my shows are only half hour. Um, it probably takes, so I've just uploaded my la latest show uh, and it took, um, I filmed it, when did I film it? Hmm. Now I'm thinking, Friday night. Filmed it Friday night, all uh, Saturday evening, all day Sunday, all day Monday on my days off, editing it. Mm. I think I then uploaded it Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, come on. Um, but as I say, I like doing that. 
but actually for a lot of people that you're like oh that's an awful lot of time to spend on a, on a hobby but actually when you think about it when we knit and we crochet we're spending an awful lot of time doing it yeah. um but that is it is a lot of work but for me that doesn't feel like work so that's where i'm lucky because it's exactly. it, is, it is kind of work but it's not because it's a hobby yeah i like it but it, exactly. editing can take a lot of time it can it can most of the time when i do these conversations I find that I don't really need to edit them so much. Sometimes I do talk too much about myself. I hope I haven't done it to, uh, this time. But um, and, and when I do that, I do edit that out sometimes. Ah. I don't think that's happened today. Um, and if it no, has, it's, it's going to <laughs> stay in. But... Um, I mean, even even as much as just slapping on an intro and an outro and, uh, you yeah. know, maybe a, a picture or two, that sort of thing, um, yeah. uh, that it, it still takes time. It still takes yeah. time. Oh, good. Absolutely. I, I, and I, go and going through the comments, that, I find that really important. I don't know what you what you feel about comments, but I really value the, the time that people have taken to not only watch a video but to then go to the comments and actually type something in to me that's a that's that's a huge amount that they've given up their time they didn't have to write a comment but they do and so i i'm still at that level and i can manage that to leave comments um and on the latest video i've already I mean, it's only been up a couple of days and i've got 48 comments to me that's a huge amount and i'm like oh my god i've got to go and comment i've got to comment because mm -hmm. it's all about that community so i want to and engage and talk with that community. also <laughs> interacting with the commenters that youtube watches that sort of thing and also for me most of the comments i get come from you know loyal followers anyway they're going to say either if it's a recorded thing they'll say that they enjoyed it yeah or if there's someone new they'll say they come they came because say it's someone that uh came because of you they'll say uh, new follower yeah. because of yeah, yeah uh that sort of thing i try to respond to every comment uh, i get comments uh all of my live streams stay up uh for replay and sometimes people, uh, some of them are just an hour long. So people will watch them maybe while they're cooking or yeah, doing laundry yeah. or something. Um, um, yeah. But um, uh, so people comment on those as well. But I try to reply to every comment mm. as well as I can. I don't, um, it's very unusual for me to get a harsh comment uh, and that's one thing i was going to say with youtube i've been blessed with wonderful comments uh uh and 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 no a couple on i tell you where i have got them and that's on on um tutorials exactly that's where i've gotten them too if you don't do tutorial rights oh, and, and it's, it's the technical values, not the not the actual content, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. And and I, what I find fascinating, and it's it's it, and it's not. I don't see it much on YouTube. Certainly not compared to Twitter, which is very say. I can't go over how people just say what they think on 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 Twitter. But I, I have had a few on 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 a video, and I got carried away with my needle sewing machine needles video. And I did lots of sound effects, <laughs> lots of techie sound effects, because I wanted to make it a bit modern and more contemporary for, for, a, <clears throat> for you know, bringing sewing machine and knitting or crochet or into the 21st century. Um, and someone said that this is a great video, but boy, did you use far too many sound effects and it ruined it or something, something like that. Mm. And I could just hear that the anger of that comment i could hear it out loud and and it, and that, that i find that fascinating how people watch a, a video 
but then they'll they'll they they feel that anger that they have to then write that. I just uh, 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 so exactly. Home. I'm going. What what did you gain by by making that comment? I mean, I got a response to a comment to somebody else's uh, that that I had made to somebody else's video that was totally non yarn related, but I had made this comment like four months ago. And just yeah. like two or three days ago, somebody felt the need to respond to my comment, calling me a dummy. And I'm going... I didn't hear any of that. Sorry, you broke up. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. What was so, your comment? Yeah, I, uh, I, I made a comment to somebody oh, yeah. uh, uh, non-yarn related video. It's not a yarn channel four months ago and somebody just the other day this week responded to my comment calling me oh, a yeah, dummy yeah. and i'm going what did you gain by making that comment i mean i did i i didn't reply of course because you don't uh but you know uh one of my tutorials i got i got a comment um you know uh all almost all of the critical comments i've gotten have been about technical values for my tutorials yeah. i got a uh to a comment from a phlebotomist who said that she likes my hand and my wrist for the veins but she can't see what i'm doing <laughs> yeah 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 I thought it was funny, but still, you know, I, I I have never really considered it my long suit, but I still want to do more of them in the coming year. Yeah, I've 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 not I'm not going down that route because I now can appreciate that how hard it is to make a tutorial it takes a lot of time. Oh, it is. Um, it's. Uh, um, so I, I know that's something I can't do. And also, I don't think I can take the, <laughs> the, the, the criticism. But, and, I th and it's a weird thing. I think it's maybe because people know everything is, they think it's free. So because it's free, they feel like they can say anything. Uh, and, and it's like, why would, why would you just want to say that anyway? Um, just, just, you know, just, I, just, just go back and choose another video. If that, if, if, if it wasn't clear, uh, someone, or do they forget that people upload these videos for free because it's just something they want to do? Um, but they, they, they then have to write those things. I, I, I spoke to one, uh, lovely gentleman who said that the, the primary reason that he charges for his patterns is that um, he doesn't get the level of criticism when he charges that he yeah. does when they're yeah. free. Because people, if they're free, people will tell you exactly what they think about them. Yeah. Uh, but if, if they have to pay for them, they'll, they'll think for themselves. Yeah. God forbid anyone should ever have to think for himself. But, but uh, on the whole, as I say, if it's on, on a normal video, the comments have been great and the community has been great and, mm, and, and it's lovely mm. watching it grow. And as I say, it is it is now, some of the videos have earned enough from ads to literally pay the electric bill at the shop. Isn't that great? Oh, I think that's lovely. I think, I honestly, I really want to come and work for you. Oh, oh. I will sleep in the back room, <laughs> but I would um, I would, it would be lovely to have a little bit of more space in the shop so I could have um, more comfier chairs. So I could have a, a drop in and knit session as well as the more formal come and sit around a table mm -hmm. and have a cup of tea. Yeah. But I would like, it's almost like that library effect when you have a lovely big library and you have a chair in the corner there or, or a, 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 a mm -hmm. two chairs there and a chair over there. And you could just go in and sit, find your space and knit with a with a grandfather clock ticking. Oh, but um, 
that needs that needs more money at, for a bigger shop. And you know what business rates are like. You've got to pay for that. And it's you can understand how some of these internet companies are doing really well because their mm. their bills are completely different to our bills. But exactly. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, and I've re-signed the lease for another five years. So the wool oh, patch that's will be going till where are we, 2022, 23, 24, 25, to 2026, and, and, and it will be growing still on YouTube too. But uh, I, as I say, I, I'm, I'm not really doing Instagram much because there's only so much time we can give. And I've decided I get more out of making my videos in my spare time and, and joining in with my YouTube community, like mm -hmm. I know with you, that to me is uh, here on a Saturday night, talking to you is way more interesting than sat watching something on sky or on netflix um i could do that on a sunday evening but um and, so and, i like the and, and i'm still going here go do people still watch netflix but <laughs> but yeah uh make sure that i have all of your social media links um so that i can put them in the description oh, i'm great. sure i probably do but just let's let's make sure uh, so there we are. We've we've gone full circle. We've started at my teaching career. We've gone 2016 to the beginning of the shop, and now renewing the lease uh, for 2022 to 26. I and, think and what the future will what will the future be? Hopefully, well, not more yarn. That, yeah, yeah. So I mean, we've been going for a good long time now. What would you like to leave our viewers with? Well, I hope you've enjoyed. If you if you're still there, wake up! Come on, <laughs> they, they, they just look to grab for their cup of tea, and it's gone stone cold. Isn't it? <laughs> That's what it is. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope, um, yeah, I just hope you 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 just you you might come in and check out, and then and uh, and 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 watch my sh stuff and if you like it then you've got david to watch and you've got me to watch as well if it's your cup of tea as i say because it's a different type of show but exactly. other than that just leave you with um the idea of if you've got a craft shop or a local business just check them out because they are on their own uh, and they do have uh, you know all sorts and that you and supporting local is is great because we i know we, we all know how good amazon is and you can buy it and it can be delivered to your door within a day and that is phenomenal but our local community where where people go and and uh, for some people so those ladies who come to my knit and natter that is their one day out a week and human contact a week um, and so those shops are really, really important for many people in local villages. It's so much more than the commerce. Yeah. It's the Absolutely. community. Yeah. So um, if you do have one of those shops, go there, buy, even if it's a couple of buttons, because uh, I know uh, we, and we didn't talk about that. And maybe we can talk about that on another, on a show. Uh, I, I'm, it'd be, uh, I, I have some interesting thoughts about yarn and we, I think we just touched on it on price um, and acrylic versus real wool. Um, and I, and that would be something to talk about another time. Um, but even if it's just to buy a, 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 yeah, a couple of buttons or, or, a, or a, a ball of wool, you know, I think it's just, it, it just helps. It helps no end, no matter what um, you spend. I mean, I think we should do another one of these for your channel. How would that be? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I don't do anything yeah. like this. That's yeah. that's fun. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm I'm going to click um end record. Uh but stick around. Yes. And, yes. Uh, Lovely chatting to you all, everyone. It's Hope been you've enjoyed perfect. it.